All right, Torchbearer TV fans, welcome back. And it has been a while, but we are back. I am Jose Torres, the Torchbearer. My man, Kyle Powers, he That's is going me. to be hosting a new segment, actually a new series that we're going to be doing on this channel called Let Your Geek Flag Fly. Co-hosting. He's with me. I'm not doing this alone. Exactly. It's much better when you get two people bickering anyway. Yeah, because when it's one, when it's one person, you get all camera shy and you start, you start not being able to do it and you end up like Garth. And if you don't know who Garth is, then that just means I'm old. But anyway, point is, we're going to be bringing you some uh, really cool conversations, cool reviews. Uh -oh. I, I know who Garth is. Yeah, I know, I know you know because you're, you're older than me. Anyway, <clears throat> it's, look, I love you. Just know that. But anyway, uh, no, we're going to be talking about anything geek and chic, anything that is comic related, entertainment related, but specifically, uh, you know, that has some form of fandom to it. We're going to be uh, jumping in on it and talking about anything and everything, no holes barred. And most importantly, we want to get insight from you. We want you to let us know what you want us to talk about. And, uh, you know, if there's things that you think that we need to know about, movies, whatnot, hit us up. If we haven't seen it, we'll watch it. We'll talk about it. We'll give you a shout out for bringing it up. So hopefully you enjoy the first episode of Let Your Geek Flag Fly. So my question to you to start this whole thing off. Mm -hmm. Three movies, Spider-Man. Which one is the best overall all-encompassing Spider-Man as both Spider-Man and Peter Parker? Question one. And I'm assuming you're, you're, you're saying it has to be the same Parker and Spider-Man ratio. I can't say Andrew it Garfield's has to be, Parker. Correct. And, it has to be uh, one of the three. <clears throat> okay. Well, damn. Based on just acting or based on the scenarios we saw? The scenarios you saw. Not, not, do not take storyline into consideration. So, like, if it, okay, don't the let the movie, if the movie was good or bad, don't let that. It's Correct. who captured it the essence. Who captured okay. the essence of the character the Ooh, best. Who, you see, who that's, was, mm. Okay. Okay, okay. I'll help you out, too, just so you can, so you're not, you know, I'm, like, not completely holding your feet to the fire here. Mm -hmm. The next question is going to be separate them, who is the best of Oh, okay, okay, fair enough, all right. Okay. So, who, first off, who's the best overall? Well, I'm not going to do the what's predictable and do go for the nostalgic being that Tobey Maguire was the first motion picture Spider-Man Peter Parker because there was a TV series in the yeah, 80s, yeah. 70, we're not going to go there. Stick to, just but, stick to um, those movie series. I will probably say... I'm going to say, you know, I, I, Toby was my favorite uh, even when Andrew Garfield came out and everything, but now in retrospect, looking at all three Spider-Man, all their movies... I almost think that Garfield has taken the title for me. And um, I'll, I'll explain why in a minute, but a, and a lot of that has to do with Far From Home. Uh, not Far, yeah, far, uh, No Way Home, excuse me. Has to do with the last movie, No Way Home. Now, to answer your, your second question, I feel that I liked, well, damn, Tobey Maguire and Tom Holland's Peter Parker I dug them both. They were they weren't they were definitely not the same. Okay, McGuire, even when he played high school aged, was still a more mature Parker. Okay, but Tom Holland is playing Peter at a younger high school age because Tobey Maguire's character was a senior. Right. We see him graduate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we don't see that with um, with Tom Holland to the third movie. So basically, right. he's a sophomore by the time we yeah. meet him in the original in sure. the first movie. So. I, for Parker, I, I'm a kind of a split tie between Tobey Maguire and Tom, Tom Holland. Holland. But for Spider-Man, there's something about Garfield Spider-Man, and I, I I don't know. I I I would say Spider-Man's like a is more is like I would say Parker is Maguire Holland, Spider-Man is Garfield Holland. Okay. For me, I'm not I'm not look, I'm not different from you. In fact, we're more alike than I thought. Okay. Here's my take because I know. The Tom Holland series has been very popular, and everybody, especially the last movie, everybody enjoyed the hell of it. In my opinion, mm. overall, he's the worst of the three. Which one? Tom Holland. Tom Holland, okay. He's the okay. worst of the three. That's not saying he was bad. Do not misinterpret. Okay. I thought the movies were fantastic. I thought he was excellent overall. I agree 100%. Andrew Garfield is by far and away the best Spider Man, period. He had the essence of Spider Man, especially the. The wise cracks, mm -hmm. the comedic element of it. It came more natural for him. It, right. It Toby had felt fit. forced. Toby did feel forced. But on a whole, overall combination, Toby McGuire, I still feel is the best okay. overall. And that's just because I felt that you had, a, at least for the most part, a better split between mm -hmm. the two. Um, whereas 
I think um, like Tom Holland and Garfield both they had I think Andrew Garfield was more Spider-Man mm -hmm. I feel Tom Holland was more Peter Parker mm -hmm. and they there wasn't that split between the two as much as there was with Maguire. I'm very much like and going a little off here uh, I got the what you said I pretty much described with Val Kilmer and Michael Keaton and George Clooney with their Batman. Batman uh, correct. Michael Keaton was the best combination Con, of balance between yeah. of the duality. I'll, I'll take it even further. I'll say I'll include Christian Bale. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. Chris, sorry, Christian Bale. Yes, Christian. Well, like I said Michael Keaton. That just holds a special place in my heart. That's it. Yeah. But Christian Bale. No, I take it back. I can't believe I forgot Bale. But Christian Bale and I am still going to say Keaton. They both demonstrated duality. Okay. Yes. Um, Christian Bale. They because it was a more because Christopher Nolan approached that series of movies from a more realistic standpoint, he explained the reason why the suit, there was a reason for every aspect of why he became what he became. Like, why why a cape? Well, the cape was actually had to design a structured reason. Right. Um, with Michael Keaton, we saw the Dark Knight, and then we saw the, not necessarily Playboy, but we saw a, a much lighter Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. With Val Kilmer, he was, I believe, Batman the whole time. Correct. Even when he was Bruce Wayne, he, he was, was still Batman. Batman. Yeah. George Clooney was Bruce Wayne the whole time. Even Agreed. when he was 100%. in the cow, he was Bruce Wayne. So I agree with you with, with what you're saying, you know, comparing that to the Spider Man setup, where Andrew Garfield was Spider Man, all that was more Spider Man. Tom Holland was more Parker. Tobey Maguire was a balance. I'm going to take what you just said about the Batman side mm. a little bit further on those since you brought you you, okay. you brought it up. Yes, We're I going yeah, now. Go, all right, um, go for it. I'm not scared. No, it's all right. It should be. I'm going to talk about the combination or the comparing the two of Christian Bale and Michael Keaton because mm -hmm. I believe what you said. Val Kilmer, Batman, 100. Yep. percent George Clooney, Bruce Wayne, 100. percent No, no dichotomy there. No duality whatsoever. Correct. No split between the two personalities that make up that character. Mm -hmm. Christian Bale. I thought was fantastic in both roles. Yes. Michael Keaton, I thought was fantastic in both roles. With that said, I think their better side are opposite of one another. I think Christian Bale's better side was actually Bruce Wayne and Michael Keaton's better side was Batman. And here's why I say that about Batman. I know the Christopher Nolan Batman series very well received, especially mm -hmm. the first two movies. It was a lot darker, a lot yeah. edgier, and I think that was definitely needed for the character. The difference is I felt that his Batman was almost comically over the top. Especially it became, with, it, with the voice. You it know, became such the, an exaggeration yeah. and has been made fun of so many times. You know, God means, gifts, everything. Yep. You, you name it, it's there. And, I mean, oh, you, have, you, have, you have influencers on social media mimicking it regularly. I mean, it, it's there. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the Michael Keaton Batman, there was that duality, but it was serious. Yes. It wasn't a character of it. He didn't have to be over the top edgy to be edgy. Exactly. It was just it was a it was a persona. Yeah. He embodied that persona and carried that through on the film, all well, films plural, mm -hmm. um, and it that came through. Like, oh, no, I, I, that's why I feel that way. And I would agree with that. Yeah. I, I would agree with that because, so, like I said, you know, the one thing with the Michael Keaton Batman is, even in the fight action scenes, the one thing about his Batman character, is that, even though he's there as a vigilante, he's kicking people's butts, he maintained. Calm while doing it. Yeah, the the thing he that was, was, where he was controlled. Absolutely. There's times with Christian Bale that yeah, control kind of went here. Yeah, but the other thing that I also I'll say about Michael Keaton, and this is more about his acting ability, and this goes into directing and storytelling of the, of the movies as well. I think Tim Burton's concepts and takes on Bruce Wayne are what held Michael Keaton back. I think mm -hmm. if you had, I think if you had Michael Keaton doing that with somebody who understood the lighter side of Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. So you had the more, Bruce Wayne is the mask, which is the one concept I think Christopher Nolan captured, yeah, and, and Christian yes. Bale captured yes. perfectly. Um, but I think if you would have had that more with Michael Keaton and let his acting range really show, mm -hmm. he has the ability to be, you know, comically and witty as a billionaire playboy would be. Yeah, no, I totally As opposed agree. to, you know, what you actually saw. But I think what, with what they were presenting, he embodied it fine. Mm -hmm. I think you, if you let him go, you really would have gotten a performance that was even better. I can agree with that. I can, I can totally agree with that. Um, okay, before we get too sidetracked, I'm yes. going to go back to Spider-Man. Okay, back to Spider-Man. Because Spider that's where we started, right? Yes, that's where we started. Okay. Okay. So, back to the Spider-Man thing. We talk, I brought those concepts and the reason I said that. 
is my question for that is because it's a very interesting take and I've heard so much talk recently about Tom Holland mm -hmm. and it just made me think about those things like I said and that's why I, obviously me and you share the same agreement on Garfield and Spider-Man is just oh, yeah. it's Again, he captures the persona of that character in costume better than anybody else has done it. And I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and I just, you know, it's one of those, I, we know what happened, or for those of you that were alive back then, because I keep forgetting, you know, we're, we're getting older. You know, for us, this is Tom Holland is our third cinematic Spider-Man, okay? Right. When we were young, and even boy, when I say we were young, when the first Spider-Man came out, we were already in our 20s. Yeah. Okay, that came out in 2002, I believe, right? Roughly. Somewhere around there, yeah. So we were already, I was already 23 by that point. So mm -hmm. the first cinematic Spider-Man that we got was Tobey Maguire in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get that as kids, we got that as 20 year olds. So we have to remember there's people who, you know, it's 2022, 20 years later, Andrew, Andrew Garfield was someone's first Spider-Man, but for a lot of today's, you know, fans, especially MCU fans, Tom Holland is their first entry into Spider-Man. That's right. Um, it, well, that's the other thing about it too, is Tom Holland's the first one that's technically in the MCU. Correct. Until this last movie when they brought the other ones in from alternate dimensions. Which makes their adventures canon now. Correct. Which but I'm excited my, about. But, I, right, I love that. They need to, and that was the right yeah. thing to do. But my point is, it was for people who have gotten into the superhero genre of movies mm -hmm. only from the MCU side of things, they don't have that background of Spider-Man. No, exactly. Now, essentially. And that, like I said, so Tom Holland will stand out for them. That'll be their first. And, I, and there probably is some nostalgia mm -hmm. factor with that when I talk about, and the same thing with you when you talk about Tobey Maguire. But for me, it's a situation where um, trying to remove the nostalgia factor and just try to take it based off of, again, capturing the persona mm -hmm. of the duality of these characters. My toes. But also, <laughs> but also the, um, you know, the, the that, the essence they have to have and that persona they have to have in each part of that role. Oh, yeah. I thought the closer, you know, the best overall was Tobey Maguire because I felt like while he may not even be the best Peter Parker and he may not be the, he's definitely not the best Spider-Man, he's the best combination. Yes. He's Where the best Kind of, kind of like we were, when you were talking about Batman, you, you brought it up first about the Val Kilmer and George Clooney representations kind of being just one side of the duality. Mm -hmm. Andrew Garfield was more of the one side of the duality. Exactly. Me. But it, what an amazing Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. And, and Spider-Man. No, I, and I agree. But, you know, here's the thing, too. You know, Toby got his trilogy. Mm -hmm. There was supposed to be a fourth film. Uh, there was a falling out between Sony Pictures and Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. Um, After and, three, yeah. yeah he exactly. Wanted, he, didn't, he wanted to pull out a three. Even. Exactly, yeah. Um, because three basically became... What, what was released was not the movie he intended to produce. Correct. Um, you know, and we've had our conversations of what we think part three, how it could have been, how it could have gone, how it could have been salvaged. But, in, and like I said, you know, you know what people... A lot of people are like, man, why don't you do this with movies? The directors do have control to a certain point of the finished product. But at the end of the day, it is the production execs. It is the people who are financing the movie, mm -hmm. Sony, Columbia Pictures, that say, hey, we don't, like, we don't think this is going to sell. And they're not, understand, these are businessmen. These are it's, not comic book fans. These are not MCU fans. They're fans of the money they're making. But they're not necessarily, yeah. they can care, most of them can probably care less about the character outside the fact that they're, you know, bankrolling them. And but all, as you said, yeah. it's their production. They're, exactly, they have the final say. So they're in charge. So yeah. you know, unless you're one of those uh, creators and you know uh, who has control mm -hmm. put into your contract, which George Lucas, <clears throat> he did. But that was, that's a whole different yeah, wild yeah, story yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you have to have a, a you have to be a creator and somebody who has enough clout to even you know Spielberg can ask for that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You, you don't have to bring up something like Star Wars but uh, with Lucas, but like Spielberg is just so wildly successful in his career that he's going to say, I'm making my movie and you're just along for the ride. No, exactly. And the studios yeah. are going to be like, gotcha. You know what I mean? Uh, more often than not. Whereas somebody, and this is not a knock against Sam Raimi, but let's face it, before Spider-Man, he hadn't had a massive breakout hit. He had a lot of cult classics. He had some stuff that was good mm -hmm. and, and definitely had a following. Yes, but he didn't have that. But Spider Man, Spider-Man Spider -Man put him on the, the that's put him that yeah. put him on the Hollywood map. Correct. Yeah. That's the he was already on the he was already on the on a film map, but he wasn't on the Hollywood map until the until right. the reception of the first Spider Man movie. Correct. Um, and that's what I, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Right, so, I got you. you know, he didn't have that. And even by even after the first two Spider Man, you're still you know you're still playing with somebody else's you know toys in the playground here. You know what I mean? Mm, you're exactly. in their yeah, sandbox. Yeah, yeah. You gotta abide by their rules. Which is why I think someone like Spielberg tends to do something more, as opposed to he doesn't do series, he tends to do more uh, uh, individual one-offs. Mm. And if you really think about it, when has he ever done a sequel? 
So okay. with that being said, um, and because this is the, you know, the first episode of our Let Your Geek Flag Fly, uh, we'd like to get some feedback from you guys. So, you know, it's not just about us coming, uh, talking about MCU and comic books or comic book movies. It's pretty much anything entertainment related. So if there are certain things that you want our take on or you want us to, to bring up, whether it's movies, books, hell, any conventions, subject, any subjects, sub topics, yeah. music, whatever you want, throw it out there. We'll look at it and consider it and we'll cover just about anything. And we'll give you a we'll reference on, to on top of that. I also want to throw out, you know, we cover a lot. We're going to talk about it and we're sharing our takes and our opinions. Mm -hmm. Share we yours. want to know your takes. What yeah. did you guys think of she? Yeah. Where Share did, your opinions down here below. We'd love to hear your takes on this. Yeah. Too. Go and, go back uh, to the beginning of this. Who was the best Spider Man? Who go was the go best back Batman. all the way. Who was the best Spider Man? Who was the best Parker? Who was the best Combo? If you could splice and dice, whose Spider Man would you put with who's Peter Parker? But that you know, put go it down there in the comments. Go yeah, for have Batman. some fun, and that, and that's all this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun, a good time. Enjoy ourselves. And there will be some points where we won't always be in our studio cave here uh there will be some times that we will be going to locations places conventions signings uh or just i don't know just change scenery but this is our hq as you see here for now or not for now this is our hq but no so, so we, we, we will we will definitely be bringing going to places such as i'm not going to say you know conventions let's leave it there we'll be doing conventions or we may be going to places that are you know we are located in georgia i'm not going to say where we're in a top secret bunker but <laughs> <laughs> but i will say this we are in the middle of what has been donned Yollywood, meaning we're only minutes away from certain places where certain movies with certain web slingers and TV films, shows and TV around. shows, yeah. uh, you know, lots just, of those actually. Lot, yeah, <laughs> but. we are also next to Walking Dead country, you know. So we will definitely be bringing uh, locations to you as well. Going to some of these locations, um, you know, Storm in the Castle. Hopefully, not getting arrested per se. No, but so no, so we'll be we'll definitely be going and doing on location shoots, and at some point we'll even uh, begin live streaming as well from either here or location. So you know this is just the first of many things to come in this uh, channel slash podcast slash whatever you want to call it. You know it, it'll evolve into many things, I'm sure. Uh, but there'll be a lot of bitching back and forth, but it'll be funny because looking at two middle aged men talking about stuff. Again, just here to have fun exactly. and have a good time and. Don't just do what we love to do, which is have a lot of topics, debates, and conversations about the stuff we love. So yeah, and like I said, and like Kyle said here, you know, if there's stuff that you, if we haven't talked about, I mean, girl, we've seen a lot of movies, a lot of movies, but there's still movies we haven't seen. So like I said, if there's movies that you want our take on, or that you can suggest we watch, you know, like I said, I'm a horror, I like horror, I, I like everything pretty much for the most part. There's nothing, but I'm a big '80s guy. I love '80s flicks. So, you know, he can tell you that, hey, you know, uh, there, <laughs> that's two of us. <laughs> we may have to, there's some movies we have to kind of take off the talk list because nowadays it probably won't be uh, appropriate by today's standards. So by many yeah. levels. Yeah. But if you're interested in asking us what they are, we'll just tell you what they are and you go watch them and be so, judging them yourself. Yep. There's a lot of other things that come in too. Like you heard little bits of takes and stuff. It's not just sharing opinions and discussion. It's also sometimes it's taking discussion into different worlds, playing what if, um, mm -hmm. you heard Jose mentioned earlier. My Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3.5. Actually, technically 3.6 because they actually released a 3.5. We just had to lead a sequel into what it. You said I know. Spider-Man 3.62. Anyway, so yeah, you'll get different takes on this stuff. And again, nothing is off the table. I said the, the name of this is Let Your Geek Fly Fly. It's anything in entertainment culture that falls under that category that uh, you like. It could be science fiction, fantasy, comic mm -hmm. books, TV shows, movies, whatever you want. You know, if it's, if it's something you want to hear a take on and you want to talk about... And, have discussion about let us know let's do it exactly